Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today, I am bringing you all another gameplay that I hope to stick with. This is Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. Now, as you can tell, this one's actually pretty old, but it runs extremely well. So, um, I think that you guys will enjoy this. Like, this was actually, like, a really, really great game. Like, I've never been able to finish it, just because I never had, like, the discipline to finish it, but... This time around, I'm determined to finish this game. So, um, so we're going to select our character, like the type that we want. So there's different clans here. So, um, so the different clans change the way how you play the game. Like you get choices and everything, which is great about this. So Brujas. Bruja are passionate idealists and rebels more likely to fight for their rights than write protest songs. In life, most Bruja sought social change, and in undeath, most clan members commonly seek the creation of a vampire utopia. As militant radicals, they are renowned for their combat skills, but are also more likely to frenzy due to their hot, hot bloodness, so to speak. They perceive a plus one to their brawl skills, but are penalized with a minus two to all frenzy checks due to their zealous natures. Okay, Gangrel. Gangrels are wild loners that are the most in tune with the beast within, allowing them to shape shift into more beastly forms. Nomadic in nature, Gangrels care little about vampire politics and prefer to dwell and hunt in the outskirts of society. Because of their animalistic nature, they receive a plus five to strength, stamina, and wits during frenzy. However, because of their inherent feral nature, Gangrel receive a minus one on all frenzy checks. Malkavians. Malkavians are known as lunatics because of their ability to hear voices of insight and subject to others to their insanity through their discipline. Dementation. The world appears much different to the Malkavian than it does to the same clans, though the extent of a Malkavian's madness depends on the individual. A blessing and a curse, a Malkavian's insanity will help or hinder them, depending on how much they struggle against their nature. Malkavians start with a plus two bonus to inspection. Nosferatu. Hideous, skul skulking, and powerful. Even in a world of monsters, the Nosferatu stand out. The embrace twists and deforms their physical features, forcing them to seek sanctuary underground. Nosferatu are monsters of the shadows. Due to their curse, Nosferatu have an appearance of zero and can never raise it higher, and they hide their existence from common humans. Having shared the darkness with vermin for so long, vampires of clan Nosferatu are able to draw extra nourishment from rats. Toreador. Toreador picture themselves as artists and visionaries, and they value the high society mentality of that the Camarilla reinforces. Of all clans, the Toreador are the most connected to the mortal world through arts and entertainment. Toreador are beautiful creatures, svelte and seductive, and move almost effortlessly through the society of the living. The Toreador's empathy is both a gift and a burden. All humanity ships are doubled. I love Toreadors. Tremere. Tremere. Blood sorcerers born from mystic rituals in, dial in Diabolary. The Tremere are the least trusted of the, Camilera, of the Camarilla clans. The ritual of the Tremere used to tra transform from living mages into undying monsters stripped them of their magic arts. To compensate, the vampires of the clan Tremere developed Thwamaturgy, the powerful discipline of blood magic. The clan guards its secrets jealously and are the only kindred to wield this powerful discipline. The pursuit of arcane knowledge comes before all else, and the reliance upon it has weakened the bloodline. Tremere can raise no physical attribute above a rank four. And then finally, Ventru. Ventru are the upper echelons of society. The Ventru are seen as the honorable and virtuous leaders of the Camarilla. They wholeheartedly support the masquerade, influencing the mortal and undead worlds to help them maintain the masquerade as well as garner support for themselves. Clan Ventru is an exclusive and powerful gathering of immortals, and even the lowest initiate the clan of Clan Ventru 
can expect special treatment in kindred society. This regal bloodline, however, gains no nourishment from the low-born and thin-blooded. Ventru gained no blood from feeding on animals. Feeding on low-life human prostitutes and the homeless can cause the Ventru to vomit. Okay, we obviously don't want that. So I want Toridor for some very obvious reasons. Like, I love Toridors. And I want to name it after a character from Twilight. So I am thinking, okay, um, Rosalie, for obvious reasoning. Let's be real. Rosalie Hale would be very proud to be a Toreador. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, fine. Fair enough. All right. So now we have to pick our attributes. So this is the fun part, actually. So I am going to choose charisma for my social as well as manipulation. And why don't we pop in um, one for strength? No. Oh, hold on. I can only pick one. So I'm thinking perception. Yeah, perception allows you to like trick people. So I want brawl. I want dodge. And I want subterfuge. Firearms will be very helpful. Security. Oh, come on. I can't pick. Great. Okay. Knowledge is. Knowledge with the computer helps a ton. Perfect. Actually, no, I don't want firearms. I want stealth. Okay. Celerity. No, actually, presence. Now let's accept this and let's watch the movie that comes with it because, okay, and you have to keep in track of the humanity. That's important because humanity allows you to, like, be within society. So you have to truly, like, pay attention to this because if you keep losing your humanity, you're basically screwed. So let's accept this. Let's do it. Kindred, my apologies for disrupting any business or interfering with prior engagements you may have had this evening. It's unfortunate that the affair that gathers us together tonight is a troubling one. We are here because the laws that bind our society, the laws that are the fabric of our existence, have been broken. As Prince, I am within my rights to grant or deny the kindred of this city the privilege of siring. Many of you have come to me seeking permission and I have endorsed some of these requests. However, the accused that sits before you tonight was not refused permission. Indeed, my permission was never sought at all. They were caught shortly after the embrace of this child. It pains me to announce the sentence, as up to tonight I considered the accused a loyal and upstanding member of our organization. But as some of you may know, the penalty for this transgression is death. Know that I am no more adjudicator than I am a servant to the law that governs us all. Let tonight's proceedings serve as a reminder to our community that we must adhere to the code that binds our society, lest we endanger all of our blood. 
Forgive me. Let the penalty commence. Which leads to the fate of the ill-begotten progeny. Without a sire, most child are doomed to walk the earth never knowing their place, their responsibility, and most importantly, the laws they must obey. Therefore, I have decided that this is bullshit! If Mr. Rodriguez would let me finish, I have decided to let this kindred live. They shall be instructed in the ways of our kind and be granted the same rights. Let no one say I am unsympathetic to the plights and causes of this community. I thank you all for attending these proceedings, and I hope their significance is not lost. Good evening. The fact that he just chose to, like, let your character live, yeah, like, that should definitely leave you very, uh, concerned. Considering. Your sire, tragic, my apologies, but you see... There is a strict code of conduct that all of us must, must adhere to if we wish to survive. When someone, anyone, breaks these laws, they undermine the well-worn fabric of our centuries-old society. Understand my predicament. Allowing you to live makes me directly responsible for your subsequent behavior. So, what I'm offering is not generosity, but the opportunity to transcend the fate woven by your sire. This is your trial. You will be brought to Santa Monica. There, you will meet an agent by the name of Mercurio. He will provide the details of your labor. I've shown you great clemency. Prove it was more than a wasted gesture, fledgling. Don't come back until you do. Good evening. Yeah, okay. You just said it wasn't generosity. So, okay, so the W, A, S, and D keys, obviously, it's pretty standard. And then Z allows you to zoom the camera in and out. I prefer to keep it zoomed in. Oh, we meet our first contact. There's Jack, portrayed by Steve Bloom. <laughs> Steve Bloom was so perfect for him. Like, you're gonna see why. Because Steve Bloom, he's a character. And this guy is quite a character. <laughs> but the Camarilla, like, they definitely read as kind of like the Voltori to this universe. Like, if anybody reads Stephanie Meyer, then you would know what I'm talking about. So. Oh. <laughs> what a scene, man. Movie. <laughs> they just plop me out here like a naked baby in the woods. <laughs> One, who are you? I'm Jack. What's important is I'm offering help. You make it back from Santa Monica with your high school train life story, okay? Till then, I got about this much time to wait around here. Okay, I can use the help. Alright. Now, we ain't got much time, but I figure somebody's fill you in on the bare bones stuff at least. Could save your hide. You look wobbly. You even had a drink yet? Okay. One, drink of what? Two, I don't remember. Three, no. Okay, I'll ask him drink of what. Because <laughs> either way he's gonna he's gonna make he he's funny when he says this. <laughs> You're gonna die. Oh man, we're popping a cherry here. <laughs> It's your new rack of lamp, your new champagne, but your new fucking heroin, kid. <laughs> Get ready, though, because, hey, it's never as sweet as the first time. Oh, God. <laughs> Blood's, your new, Blood's your new heroin. 
<laughs> okay, that reminds me of that line from the first Twilight movie where Rob Pattinson tells Kristen Stewart, where your blood, it's like my own personal heroine. <laughs> I wonder if the writers of this game were influenced by Stephanie Meyer or if Stephanie Meyer was influenced by this game. It depends on which one came first. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> what do I do? So, what do I I mean? Uh Uh, won't he become a vampire then? <laughs> Forget that comic book crap, kid. It don't work that way. <laughs> Go for it. Be sure, though, that this is important, so listen up. Be sure not to drain him dry, okay? It might be hard to resist, but don't kill him. Okay, so this is actually really cool. Like, I love how he tells you... Forget the comic book crap. Like, that is hilarious. <laughs> it's like, kind of like what Stephanie Meyer established in her books as well. Like, forget the comic book crap. Forget the books and movies. Like, okay. Feed. Press that F key. That's how you do it. That's the way you do it. Okay, good. At least he's not drained dry, which is a good thing. Hey, Jack. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Hell yeah, you're feeling it. I can see it in your eyes. You're a born-again predator. Feel that blood bubbling inside you, lifting you up. That's it, kid. That's what it's all about right there. Okay, I could be a total jackass and say, great, when do I get my cape? Do I get to pick the color? <laughs> I could be a total jerk. Or I could say number two. I don't know how I feel about it, but it does feel good. I'm going to go with number two. All right, now, you got the blood, you're feeling all kick-ass, feeling better than your best day living, but wait, it gets better. All kindred, kindred, that's an hour word for vampires. All kindred have a few things in common. Yeah, like what? Like sharper senses, a body that can take a beating, and if you play your cards right, eternal life. That's no sure bet, but still, the chance of immortality is not a bad deal. And that's just for starters. French benefits for joining the club. So I'm going to live forever? Well, you can still be destroyed. Got it. Okay now. What the fuck is this? Oh. We'll meet up with them. Oh come on. I I hate. Okay. No, I didn't want to use my gift. Come down here. Stay away from the window. Uh, it's a it's a So what's up? The Sabat got wind of the gathering here, so they figured they'd raise a little hell and put a little heat on the new place. What's the Prince of Prince of? No time for a political run now, would 
got one, get out of here alive. Spot might be mindless, but they hit like a Mack truck, like raging savages. Nothing a fledgling like he wants to mess with. What am I supposed to do? Shh, shh. up. Oh, crap. It's a bastards. All right, we gotta go moose out the back quick. I'll stay and keep a watch out. You get us into the office. The door's around the corner here. Pick that lock. Inside. Ah, uh, shortcut. Well, nicely done, though. Not exactly an angel in life, were you? Hmm. One. I know how to handle myself. Cool. Now, if you want a lesson on how really not to act, take notes for those sabat assholes. You're a big bad vampire. Yeah, great. Congrats. Now keep it to yourself. You go and roar and you beat your chest, and that's what you can expect. Wait, I've still got the list of people from high school. Why not? It's the same reason you don't let humans see you feeding. It's why the wolf doesn't want the sheep to know he's there. It's also why you don't go juggling dumpsters or outrun the 815 from Sacramento. And it's, and it's why you didn't know any of this when you woke up this morning. I get it. Keep our secret secret and you make things easier on all of us. We're living in the age of cell phone cameras. Fuck ups ain't tolerated. Makes sense enough, right? Well, it ain't a casual thing for a legend like you. What do you mean? What could happen? That party back there with the guy in the suit and the Magilla Gorilla? The assholes that put your sire to death? That's the Camarilla. Oof. They make a tidy business out of enforcing vampire laws like this one. Two. Camarilla? So they're like the vampire good guys? Mm, yeah, I'll tell you what I think some other time, maybe. I like to let people form their own opinions. All right, so what's next? All right, now don't worry, because I know the area a little. And you know what? I'm glad we're in this situation, you and I. It illustrates a point. You gotta utilize your surroundings. Okay, but what does that mean exactly? You do what you gotta do. Theft, destruction of property, breaking and entering. <laughs> These will be the least of your sins before the night's out. So look around here. We gotta get out the back there through that magnetically sealed door. There must be a key someplace. I'll find it. Okay. So, the key. Alright, so first thing we gotta grab is this note. It's the first thing we gotta read. Chop chop. Okay. So, first thing we gotta do is go to this computer. So save. Chop shop. Unlock. Sweet, perfect. Awesome. Nice. Ooh, take everything. Take the key card. There we go. Now take that key card and head out the back. I'll meet you out in the alley there. I'm gonna check out things from top side. Got it. Perfect. All right, here we go. Let's go. Okay, as soon as you step out here, you're gonna be in trouble. Okay, I have been wounded so, like, significantly there. 
Yeah. See, that represents your health there. Alright. Z. So you can see what I'm doing. Fucking waste of unlife, you sabat vatos. You get winged? Hey, hey! Look at them potholes! Those will close up soon enough. Better feed, though. <laughs> There's someone down the stairs here. Not the freshest catch, but it'll do. What's the difference? Blood's blood, right? Well, when it comes to feeding, it's quality blood you're looking for, not the quantity. Bombs and lowlife don't pack the same punch that a healthy, well-bred human will. Juice bags with a pedigree. That's the good stuff. But you gotta take what you can get. You ever had a PhD, kid? Ooh, that's good stuff. If you say so. Remember what I said, though. Don't kill them. At least not the innocent ones. You're a monster now. Make no mistake. One of the damned and the fallen. You need to hold on to every last shred of humanity you have. Let's say I get a little overzealous. What happens then? An innocent's an innocent. You kill one, even a worthless bum, even by accident, and it's going to cost you a piece of your own humanity. Bring you closer to that beast you got welling up inside you. The beast? What exactly does that mean? The beast? It's always there. Waiting to take over. What it does, it's like a wild animal wearing your skin. Desperate, scared, reckless. He'll do anything to survive, and it's you that has to deal with the consequences. So I can't kill anyone? That seems a little, uh, restricting. I, 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 I said innocent humans. If some asshole levels a 12-gauge your way, you train him, skin him, and bash in his skull. Self-preservation is a vital part of humanity, after all. My favorite part, in fact. <laughs> I think I follow. The only way to fight the beast is to keep in touch with your humanity and don't go hungry. It's a fine line. Got it. All right, now go feed. Careful, though. He's going to drain fast. Be back in a minute. Remember you want to avoid draining your victims. Draining innocent humans will give you a penalty to your humanity. The lower your humanity, the closer you get to the beast. If your humanity gets too low, you will begin to lose control of your character. This is known as frenzying and may result in a masquerade violation if you are around humans. Alright, you really don't want that, so time to feed. I wasn't even that thirsty to begin with, so... Not quite as good, huh? Hey, you can do worse. There's some rats down the way. You think I'm kidding? You can survive feeding on animals if you can stomach that kind of thing. Worse than a bum's neck? That scarf tastes like old gym socks. I'll give it a try. I'll think about it. Psh, rats. Jesus Christ. It's like, like, he describes it as that. Okay, fine, fair enough. But it's like, remember that line that Edward Cullen had? in the first Twilight movie, or even the first Twilight book for that matter, about how surviving off of animal blood, like, is equivalent to a human surviving on tofu. It's just not as good. Yeah, this is definitely a case of that, so. Yeah, the rats drain pretty quick. Disgusting. He's gonna make fun of me. Watch. <laughs> you rat sucker! <laughs> hey, I don't care what you do, but just so you know, polite vampire society looks down on that kind of thing. <laughs> they can be polite and pass me the salt for my rat. Keep it down. Got someone around the way here. Just one guy? Not too much of a threat by himself, but you never know if there's more in shouting range. You're gonna have to sneak past. Sneak where? The building across from us with the garage door. There's some double doors on the far side. I'll meet you inside. Just stay low and stick to the shadows. And don't let him see you. I'll do my best. See you in a minute. All right, go. Gone. Okay, so I'm pretty sure X is for crouching. How do you crouch? I, I completely forgot how to crouch. Uh. Oh, 
Okay, hold on. Where are the options? Let me see. Crouch. Duck. Okay. Okay, the control key allows you to crouch. Okay. Okay, so time to see. Okay. I don't think he sees me. I told you that would have happened the first time. Because I play, I record, and I get overzealous. Shit. Okay. Bring the Z out. Have to see what I'm doing first. Okay, good. That shovel head outside just got separated from his pack. He's wounded too. Go take care of him. Don't worry. He's probably greener than you. What makes you think that? The Sabat, you see, they don't have the most rigorous training program. In fact, that poor sod is lucky if he knows he's a vampire. How can that be? He's probably just turned and beaten over the head. They like to do that big shock troops, cannon fodder, put him out of his misery. He is a vampire, so be ready. Go get him. Okay, so I'm unarmed, which means that I'm gonna need a crowbar soon enough. Him up. There we go. We got him. All right. Ooh. Ooh. Tire iron. Gotta take that. Okay. So, where's the inventory? Sounds like you got another pack moving in, though. The Sabat are going all out. You better head underground, avoid straight bullets. Sounds like a good strategy. All right, head down into the basement through the grate in there. Keep that tire iron handy. I'll be there in a minute. Jump down. All right, that was good. He did good that time. What's going on? Sounds like the Sabbat's getting scattered. 
I'm gonna keep an ear to the ground. Be careful going forward here. Could be a whole mess of them holed up. Okay, I can't move, like, anywhere, so what do I do? Go on ahead, just keep it down. Let me see if the settings. That's what I hate is that, like, look at options. Holster weapon H. I'm trying to figure it out. Like, what are the options?
Oh, okay, I see it. Maybe the hotkey menu will work better? Yeah. Okay. Right there. I think they're cleared out. There's no need to go stirring up the hornet's nest till we know the score, though. Head through here. Come to an elevator around the way. Meet you there. Don't let them catch you. Sorry.
flop you out here like a naked baby in the woods. <laughs> How about that? Ah, look, kiddo. It's about Can I reload? No, 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 no. No. I wanted to load that. You know, I should have saved this like so long ago. So you know what? I'm gonna save it here, then play it up to that point, and then record it the next time we go. So um, I think that's all I'm gonna do for today. So God bless, happy gaming. See you guys. So.